guys, it's me, Alan. I'm back with another video. Uh, you can tell my voice is kind of off. Um, I have been feeling a little under the weather as of today. Uh, um, but that being said, uh, I got meds. I got orange juice. I got ginger ale. I'll be right. I wanted to bring y'all Road to Revenge Part 8 Survivor Series Horror Games. No, I'm not going to say it's screaming. Um, because I have, I know I'm late on it. I apologize. I've been busy. Um, but that's what this video is going to be. And then later tonight, uh, so make sure, of course, to like, subscribe, and turn on post notifications. Because tonight, I will be going live for Patriots, Bills, Thursday Night Football with a good friend of mine, uh, Byron O'Flair Jr., otherwise known as Original Big Rye, or OBB for short. Uh, regardless of this, um, I'm still going to have a good time. I'm excited. Can't wait. I'll see y'all then. Um, that aside, I also want to mention, if you haven't checked out any of the previous episodes of this series, go check those out. Link to the playlist will be in the description, and it'll also pop up at the end of the vid, so watch all the way through. Um, and also in the description will be a link to where you can buy merch. From the Wrestling Club, created, of course, by Victor Taylor Perry, who's an absolute OG and a certified boss. No, I'm not trying to quote Enzo Amore here. I'm just saying Victor's the GOAT. Um, and uh, I wish I had a wrestling club, you know, in my school growing up. So go support the wrestling club. Go buy their merch. Um, I'm not doing this because I was told to. I'm just doing this because they're fucking awesome. Um. You know, they've been endorsed by a bunch of different wrestlers. And hell, somebody even sent a wrestling club uh, sweatshirt to Indiana Pacers guard Tyrese Halliburton, who was wearing it, uh, walking to the plane to go uh, with the Pacers uh, to go, I believe, out west to play the Lakers fairly recently. And the Pacers post, uh, posted pictures to their social media of the players as they were boarding the plane. He was wearing it. Um, so shout out to him. Shout out to all the wrestlers who've endorsed the wrestling club. And to everybody else who's still discovering them. Awesome kids. Awesome teacher. They're worth the fall. Anyway. With all that being said. Excuse me. Let's go ahead. And let's jump into this. So. Excuse me. Going back to the last episode being. Um, uh, Crown Jewel. We got to talk about the Raw Women's title match. Bianca Belair. Versus Rhea Ripley. Rhea Ripley defending the belt after winning it in the ladder match at Extreme Rules. Basically off of Liv Morgan sacrificing herself to uh, to keep Bianca Belair away from the uh, the, the ring. Um, and this is going to end up being a last woman standing match. Because it, it's the only way this can really end. Um, and, and they just go at each other. Like, it's not the same as the Bianca Bailey match, last Wednesday match we got in real life at Crown Jewel, but um, it's a hell of a match. And the way it ends is Bianca handcuffs Rhea at both arms to the top rope on the outside of the ring, so against the post, and then grabs her legs, brings those up onto the ring, uh, onto the canvas, handcuffs them behind the post. And then ties a rope around her chest and post to absolutely prevent Rhea from moving. And thus, Bianca wins back the title she never technically lost. Because this goes all the way back to SummerSlam with Liv pinning Rhea um, to get the win. So, that being said, uh, on the Raw afterward, Bianca just talks about um, you know the journey it was to get her title back. Uh, and it basically doesn't apologize for any of it and says that if you get in her way, she's going to kick your ass because that's what the EST does. Um, and she's looking ahead to Survivor Series for games. Well, on SmackDown, Alexa comes out with her teammates, Sasha, Becky, and Bailey, and boasts about Sasha's victory over Charlotte at Crown Jewel and talks about how Charlotte carried out of the ring by the girls um, and that Charlotte won't be seen for quite a while. 
she'll obviously pop, obviously come back, and we'll get to that when we get to it. But um, Alexa just says that Charlotte's away, and she's going to be away for a while. And then she switches gears to Survivor Series War Games and immediately calls out Bianca. So it's essentially the Raw Women's Champion versus the SmackDown Women's Champion, but it's a War Games match, so you've got other people involved. And Alexa says that uh, Bianca needs to find three people willing, or maybe not so willing, we will get to that, to not team with her, but go to hell with her and fight the darkness that is Alexa Bliss, Becky Lynch, Bailey, and Sasha Banks. And a personal message to Bianca to not get cocky. And Alexa leaves it at that. So, uh, I should also mention it's only a three-week build between Crown Jewel and Survivor Series because they're both in the month of November. Um, and that's how the month kind of stacked up. So, we get to the Raw the following week and Bianca answers Alexa's challenge and says she will get people to join her. So, it's four on four. And talking specifically to Alexa, she says that... Um, Alexa may have brought the darkness out of her because she thanks her for that. She thanks her for showing her the way. But Bianca will be the one to hand Alexa a loss and furthermore destroy her group. Um, and you play it up as the EST getting more cocky and heelish, of course, being heel because of Alexa. Um, because she thinks that now that she's got her title back and that, you know, she's embraced this darkness that she's, you know, even that she's better. And don't get me wrong, Bianca is easily one of the best that WWE has to offer in the women's division. Anybody who tries to discredit Bianca is a fucking idiot or they're blind, one of the two. And I say that with no offense, but I also say that with honesty. Uh, and I'm not saying that you just don't like her just for not liking her. I'm just saying. Like, if you don't acknowledge her talent, her strength, her amazingness, um, and all of that stuff, it's just, you're blind. Uh, but anyway, so, um, Alexa fires back on SmackDown and says that Bianca thinks she knows everything about the darkness, but that, Ale that Bianca hasn't learned a damn thing. This is why Alexa said to Bianca to not get cocky. And she'll have to talk to her face-to-face, one-on-one, before Survivor Series, just to make sure she understands that. Because otherwise, Survivor Series War Games, Bianca will get humbled. And the darkness it gives, and it takes away. So... Uh, Bianca, through intimidation, gets Dana, Carmella, and Zelina to join her. Because, remember, even though this storyline does follow along with what's going on in real life, save for obvious things like, you know, Bailey being a part of the group means we don't get damage control. Which means Dakota, because she was fired, she'd still st technically be fired, and EO would still be down in NXT. <laughs> Um, and Rhea, I have said before, is still a part of Judgment Day. Uh, basically, the Judgment Day group, um, they've been off doing their own thing. They've been doing their own thing alongside of Rhea going after the belt. Um, so I don't think the Dominic stuff will have happened in this storyline. But you could say that Mia Yim does get brought in by... Uh, or I should say that both the OC and Mia Yim joined uh, AJ Styles in the same timeline. It's just that you don't have Dominic involved. That said, though, um, Rhea's focus has been on the title. But anywho, um, and basically after losing Bianca, this is when uh, the OC and Mia really start going after the Judgment Day because now that now that Rhea's sort of out of the title picture at the moment. So it keeps Rhea going. Uh, but obviously Rhea's not going to team with her. Um, so basically her and Mia would be technically feuding. Um, 
and a lot of the star power is on SmackDown because of Alexa. Uh, having Sasha, Becky, and Bailey under her wing. So there's that. Now, that's not to discredit Zelina, Carmella, or Dana whatsoever. They are all talented. But when you look in terms of star power, absolutely, Alexa's group is far superior. Now, that being said, on the Raw before uh, Survivor Series, you have the advantage match. Now, it's happening here and not on SmackDown for a reason. Uh, it's going to be, it would be Sasha versus Zelina and Alexa's group wins or Sasha wins, giving her team the advantage. And Alexa, uh, announces right then and there, right after they win, that she's going to enter the match first, which throws Bianca off her game because in a way, but she gets it in her head. Okay. Then I'll come out last for my team. And I'll be far fresher than Alexa is. Um, so Alexa also declares that she wants to see Bianca on SmackDown one on one, just the two of them in the ring for a face to face conversation. Uh, and Bianca obliges. So that's exactly what we get. No ambush, nothing like that. Just champ versus champ. And they go at it verbally uh, in a promo segment where they both trade barbs at each other. Bianca is saying that the darkness made the EST stronger, but it probably didn't take Alexa bringing it out of her to get there because Bianca is already the best. And Alexa basically mocks her saying that Bianca doesn't know half of what Alexa knows about the darkness. And it repeats the same line as before. The darkness gives and the darkness takes away. They end up in a scuffle. Uh, and Alexa is just left laughing her ass off at Bianca, which does catch Bianca off guard a little bit uh, as the segment comes to a close. So we go to Survivor Series War Games. Um, as I said, Alexa enters first. Um... Dana gets set in first for Bianca's team, so they go at it. Becky joins in second for Alexa's team, and Alexa basically lets Bianca, or sorry, lets Becky handle Dana until Zelina comes in, and Zelina goes after Alexa. Um, and then Bailey comes in and goes after Zelina. So basically, the theme thus far, and you'll see it as we continue, is Alexa gets involved. But she also holds back because she's waiting for Bianca. Um, so then uh, Sasha comes out last for Alexa's team. Or, yeah. So Bailey comes in. Zelina comes in. Sasha comes in. No, wait. Hold on. Alexa. Dana. Becky. Zelina. Bailey. Carmella. Okay, I got that wrong. My apologies. So Carmella comes in after Bailey. And then Sasha comes in, and then, um, no, right? Hold on. Alexa, Dana, Becky, Zelina, Bailey, Carmella, Sasha. Okay, so I did have that right now. So Sasha comes in last for, for Alexa's team, and Alexa is just waiting for Bianca. And as the timer comes down, Alexa just stands there in one of the two rings looks over at Bianca and tells her to come at her. And Bianca does. And they go at it. Um, Bailey hits a diving elbow from the top of the cage uh, onto Zelina on top of a table. Um, I would probably give another high... Uh, Bianca would probably have a high spot herself. Um... Not sure what she would do, but I think she would get one. But Alexa focuses so much on Bianca. And Bianca, ha despite how strong she is, can't seem to overpower or over-strategize against Alexa to outdo Alexa. And Alexa, she hits the final big move of the match, hitting Twisted Bliss onto Bianca, who's getting held up by Sasha, Becky, and Bailey. 
um, as sacrifice while Zelina, Carmella, and Dana are on the are in the other ring, um, restrained uh to the ropes, and Alexa pins Bianca to win. The teams exit the cage, sans Alexa and Bianca. Bianca is still laying on the mat. Alexa goes to leave, and then she goes back to Bianca and absolutely destroys her. And just beats the shit out. And Alexa repeats once again, the the darkness gives and the darkness takes away. And Bianca then stands up, hobbling, stumbling. She's got the Raw Women's title with her. And she's completely confused. As if to say, when the darkness took over, her normal self blacked out. And you're going to see that. Uh, you're going to see that pop up again later. Um, it'll probably pop up a few times, but this is the first instance of that. And so Bianca leaves the cage wondering what the hell happened. And Alexa gets asked backstage later. Uh, by the way, the women's match, like in real life, does open war games. I should mention that as well. But Alexa gets asked later why she did what she did. And Alexa repeats, the darkness gives and the darkness takes away. And then just laughs off and then just laughs and leaves. So uh, moving forward, uh, I've said before, I believe I said last episode, I'm not going to necessarily follow the pay-per-view structure because day one did get canceled. So I'm not going to do that here, which leaves a massive amount of bill going into the Royal Rumble. Uh, with the Royal Rumble, I have to figure out how I'm going to piece together the women's match um, for that video. And yeah, so that's going to be fun. Um, and I'll let you know when I have that done. Uh, because now, going into 2023, with this storyline, we finally get to see where things end for Alexa and Charlotte, or at least for Charlotte, and how things continue for Alexa and what happens. And circling back to the darkness gives and the darkness takes away with all that being said though again i apologize for how i sound i'll feel better i promise uh make sure to drop a like subscribe turn on post notifications so you don't miss out on future videos and streams i will uh catch y'all later tonight for bill's patriots thursday night football uh make sure to check out the previous episodes of the series and also make sure to go get yourself some wrestling uh, wrestling club merch before it sells out and hopefully gets restocked in the future. Catch y'all next time. Peace.